This is southern Vietnam, and this is the native range of one of the world's most popular pet pythons, the Burmese pythons. The Burmese pythons' native range is from India all the way across Southeast Asia to China. Now, we all know that the Burmese python is an invasive species in South Florida, so I came to this specific spot here in Vietnam to look into how Burmese pythons are living out here in their native range as opposed to how they're living in Florida. And not only that, but to see how Burmese pythons are living out here in the wild so that we better know how to care for them in our homes. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So our adventure to find Burmese pythons in the wild starts right here in the busy, bustling city of Saigon. We've got a three-hour ride to get into the jungles, into the Burmese pythons' habitat. And to get there, this is our ride. And because it's illegal for foreigners to operate a motor vehicle here in Vietnam, guess where I get to sit? All right, I need a helmet? Yeah. Is that gonna fit? We're about to find out. All right, so from here, it's a three-hour ride into the jungles, into the Burmese pythons' habitat. You guys better be smashing that thumbs up button for this. I look ridiculous. Let's go. Whoa! Uh, that's a that's a really big truck coming right right at us. I can no longer feel my ass. All right, so from here, apparently we are going to hike for a couple of kilometers down that path there to a place where these guys have told us that we have about a 90% chance of finding a Burmese python. Uh, oh, right after I stretch a little bit. Uh. So this is the habitat of the Burmese python here in Vietnam, and it is not at all what I expected. I did not expect large pine trees and palmettos like we find in South Florida, but I certainly imagined a more tropical wet rainforest, and this is anything but. This is a tropical forest, but it's a tropical dry forest, and I mean really dry and really buggy. And this is actually the wet season, and it is still this dry in here. But look at this. There aren't any big leafy palms. It looks like any deciduous forest anywhere in the world. And the underbrush basically looks like any other forest. It's not the underbrush of a tropical rainforest. There aren't huge tree ferns here. The undergrowth of this forest actually gets a lot of sunshine. And we've got, you know, these huge buttress trees here. But if we climb up here and go deeper into the forest, you have these little patches of sunshine that come all the way through the canopy up there. 
and heat up these places and then you've got the, all these nice little shadowy places so within this small little area right in here you've got several climate zones you've got cooler in the shade there's a mound right there that i'm sure something is burrowed in but then you've got these sunny spots and any snake that's found in this area whether it be a burmese python or another species of snake is going to take advantage of all of these different climate zones they're going to cool off in the shade when they get too cold in the shade they're going to come and sit in the sun for a while when they reach that optimal temperature that they prefer they can retreat back into the cooler areas to cool down a bit and when the cooler areas get too hot they can retreat underground to a mound like that so we have several different temperature zones happening in just a short amount of space right here in this forest but if you look at what the ground is it's basically the same as any forest in the world you have a lot of leaf litter you have really compact soil and again this soil is really dry there's not a lot of moisture to the soil at all yeah this seriously is not what i expected when i imagined the habitat of the Burmese python. But in order to find Burmese pythons here, our new Vietnamese friends down there told us that because this forest is so dry, the Burmese pythons are going to be around water sources and permanent water sources like rivers or ponds or things like that. And it's really easy to find them because they're not out in the general forest. They're gonna be concentrated around those water sources. Oh, is that Boega Jaspiria? This is. So uh, this is, an extremely rare boega here in Vietnam, isn't it? Yeah. How rare is the snake? Yeah, it's not uh, found very often. It's not found very often? Yes. So it is a rare snake in Vietnam? Yeah, because uh, it just can find in a where they cold. They prefer colder, higher elevations? Yes. So we all know the mangrove cat-eyed snake or the mangrove snake. It's in the genus boega. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just get the snake. Hang on. So I was just talking about how these guys are expert tree climbers and then he falls out of the tree. And what he's doing right now, look at what he's doing. He has his whole head flattened out, flaring out. He's trying to make his head look as big as possible. He thinks I'm a predator. He thinks he's in trouble. You're not, buddy, just relax. But like cobras that fan out their ribs to make a hood, other snakes like this species will do it vertically just like this guy is doing right now and the reason why they do that is to make their head look as big as possible and make themselves look big and puffy and really formidable to try to scare off a predator but this is maybe i would guess six months old it's not a very old snake it's just a little guy but these guys can get up to two meters or six feet long but this is an extremely rare snake that can be found here in Vietnam. Man, so awesome. I'm going to take a couple of photos and we're going to put you right back on the tree there, little buddy. And you're going to stay up in the tree this time. No falling off of there. There we go. All right, so we've got a little calmer water. Wait, 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 what, what? Oh, oh, oh! Look at this, look at this, look at this! Oh, oh, jeez, jeez, jeez. We've got a Burmese python. I was just explaining that we've got, whoa, 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 whoa. I was just explaining that we've got calmer water over there than the other side of the road, and I expected to maybe see a python over there. And then my new Vietnamese friends up there just called out that there was one crawling right through the forest right here. Look at this guy, he's not a big one but he is surly. He is not at all happy to meet me as much as I'm happy to meet him. Look at how he's moving his tail like that. This is one nervous snake. He thinks I am a giant predator that is coming to make a meal out of him and he is going to defend himself. And so the first thing that he's going to do is he's going to huff and he's gonna puff and he's gonna make a lot of noise. He's gonna move that tail like that so that if I am a predator, I'm gonna go for the moving tail not his head. I'm, whoa, oh my God. <laughs> this is incredible. All right, so I'm gonna try to get this snake who is still sitting there in that defensive posture and he or she is still huffing and puffing. She's standing her ground and she sees me and 
things. I have no stick, I have no hook. I don't use hooks out in the wild. All right, sweetheart, we're gonna, we're just gonna gently pick, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, easy, easy. I am going to get so bit by this snake. Oh, there you go. Oh, she's biting my boot, and while she's doing that, I'm gonna grab her here. That is the old boot trick. Whoa! Come on, sweetheart. There you go. All right, so this is kind of fortuitous because half of her body is now wrapped around that stick, and this is exactly how you handle king cobras in the wild. So if you hang on to the tail and have them wrapped around a stick like this, you can better control the snake, and you can better control where they're going to bite. But if you let go of the snake, the snake is gonna come right at me and charge. Whoa, 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 whoa. And now she just broke the stick and I am on my own. <laughs> this is going well. This snake is so surly. I don't think this snake is going to calm down at all. So here's what we're gonna do. Now, I'm offering her my boot because she can't, the boot is rubber and she can't break her teeth. I'm worried that if she bites me, I'm more worried about her breaking her teeth on my skin because what pythons have is they have, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, sweetheart, come on, come on. There you go, there you go, there you go. They will instinctively pull back and then coil. That is how they get their prey and how they constrict their prey. And if he bites me, if he bites into my flesh right now, not only is he going to cut through my flesh with those sharp needle-like teeth, but I'm afraid that it's gonna hurt the snake more than it's gonna hurt me. So I do not want to get bit by this snake simply because I don't want to hurt this snake. But this snake is not calming down at all. This snake is very surly, very, very angry. So I bet it's at this point that you're saying, well, Dave, why don't you just grab the snake behind the head and keep it from biting you? Well, there's a reason I'm not doing that, and that's because that maneuver is exactly what a predator does right before it kills this snake and eats it. And grabbing a snake, especially a big one like this, behind the head to try to subdue it puts so much undue stress on that snake. That maneuver tells the snake that it's about to die. And already this encounter is stressing out this snake and I don't want to stress it out any further by doing that maneuver of grabbing the snake behind its head. So all I can really do here is work with this snake and try to calm her down and try to keep her stress level as minimal as I can. Whoa, whoa, she almost got me. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this vine and I'm gonna control her with the vine but I'm still within striking distance but she is still surly, she is still on guard and I am still in the strike range, but this is giving me a little bit of leverage on this snake. Whoa, 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 whoa. But all the snake wants to do is get away at this point, and she wants to defend herself in any way that she possibly can. I'm assuming female, anyway, at this size, it's very hard to tell. But when I found reticulated pythons in Bali and Thailand and found all of the pythons that I have in Australia, usually, they calm down after a while when they realize that you are no threat. This girl is absolutely not doing that one bit. And so it's very difficult for me to negotiate this snake and work with this snake. But let's just see if we can calm down and just be a really good python here. Nope, nope, she still wants a piece of me. There we go, sweetheart, there we go. There we go, calm down. Come on, nope, 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 nope. Get that head down, get that head down. Let's try to put you on the ground and see if that works. Come on, sweetheart. There we go. There, nope, I said there we go. We had it, buddy, we had it. Oh man, what a beautiful snake. She's got this perfect ladder pattern going down the first third of her body. She is absolutely big, very well fed. She is big and thick and she is eating well out here. And Burmese pythons in the wild here in Vietnam, they are eating primarily mammals. So they will eat everything from small rodents. If they can get a bat, they'll eat a bat. The large ones will even take down and eat a monkey. And now you can see that with her body on the ground, she's not as alarmed as if I was just simply picking her up. When you handle snakes, it's good to keep a, at least two thirds of their body on the ground if at all possible. Now when you're dodging bites, 
That's a whole nother story. You have to do what you need to do. But look at how much this snake has calmed down now that I've put two thirds of her body on the ground. She feels much more secure. She feels much more at ease. She is still on very high alert. She still has no idea what I'm doing. And she still has no idea if she's actually in danger. But look at this. This snake is now a little bit more calm than it was before and I'm still handling her. Oh man, this is such an amazing moment. And to find again my first Burmese python in the wild in its natural habitat here in Vietnam is absolutely incredible. And where I'm crouched right now, I've got some thorns poking me in a very, well, uncomfortable place. But I'm just gonna move over here. And that did not help one bit. See, but now she has calmed down. She's taking it easy. She's not snapping at me anymore. But that could change in two seconds and there it is. But this is not a very big Burmese python. This may be, it's very hard to tell an age of a snake out in the wild like this. But at this size, this snake could be between two and five years old, I would be guessing. But these snakes are giants. They can grow over 20 feet and they can have bodies the width of a telephone pole. These are incredibly giant, formidable snakes. But for now, we're gonna let this girl go because listen, Handling a snake like this in its wild habitat, again, she thinks I'm a predator. Th she thinks that I am attacking her and that I'm about to eat her, and that causes a lot of stress. So I don't wanna stress her out any more than I have to. But if she's posing like this, I'm gonna get a few beauty shots of her, a couple of photos of her, and then we're gonna let her get on her way back to Vietnam. But I cannot describe how absolutely awesome a feeling this is to find, whoops, and I just let go of your tail. You're on your own, buddy, and so am I. But I cannot describe how absolutely amazing it is to find my first wild Burmese python in its native range. Look at that, she is sitting so beautifully. Oh, you are the most beautiful snake ever. Whew, that was absolutely amazing. And it's just like my new Vietnamese friend said, you find those water sources, you're gonna find the pythons. And I was a little skeptical of that, but that was absolutely incredible. So having spent a little time here in the native habitat of the Burmese python, seeing how dry it is in this forest and how very different temperature-wise, humidity-wise, how very different this place is from South Florida. South Florida is not an ideal habitat for these Burmese pythons. And after being now in their native range, it really makes me wonder how long those pythons are actually going to survive in South Florida. Simply because I don't think they are going to be able to survive that much longer in that really hot, incredibly humid environment in South Florida, which it absolutely is not like here in their native environment. Comment below and let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me that the Burmese pythons in Florida probably aren't going to be there for very much longer. Comment below, let me know your opinion on that. So it's midday right now, and at these extreme temperatures, most reptiles are going to be underground, under something, in some sort of shelter to get away from this heat. But I'm still gonna take some temperature and humidity readings just to illustrate how hot it gets here in the Burmese Python's range. All right, so in this clearing right here, we're gonna take a temperature reading. Look at that, the ground temperature is 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 35.9 degrees Celsius, and that's in direct sunlight. But you move over here in the shade, and it drops to 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. All right, so let's take some ambient temperature and humidity readings. I'm gonna take this reading right here in this sunny patch on the forest floor. I'm just gonna set that down, and we'll see what the ambient temperature and humidity is here in just a second. Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, look at that, 38 degrees Fahrenheit, ambient temperature, at only 57 degrees humidity, which is very strange for being in a Southeast Asian jungle. 
That's 104 degrees, 105 degrees ambient temperature right here in this sunny spot. All right, by way of comparison, I'm gonna let the ambient temperature cook in this shady spot to demonstrate those climate zones that I was just talking about. And look at that, in the shady spot, the humidity has risen to almost 70%, and it's 33.5 degrees Celsius, which is 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that, you can see that there are different micro temperatures, microclimates within the same jungle. Those two readings were taken within about five feet of each other. Obviously, it's going to be hotter with less humidity in the sun than it is in the shade. But what Burmese pythons and all the other snakes that live here in Vietnam will do is that they will constantly move from one temperature extreme to another temperature extreme to thermoregulate. And again, these temperature readings are in midday, so it's kind of like a snapshot of a day in the life of a Burmese python. Burmese pythons out here are nocturnal or primarily nocturnal. You do see them out in the daytime, but mainly you see them at night when the temperatures are much cooler. So I'm gonna wait till tonight and I'm gonna take more temperature readings after sundown to see those temperature extremes. So at night, it's a totally different story here in the forest where the Burmese python lives. And nighttime temperature drops are one of those things that is so overlooked when keeping Burmese pythons or any snakes really. So I'm going to take some temperature readings and some humidity readings right here in the forest right where we found that Burmese python earlier today. All right so let's start out with some surface temperatures. So it's 78 degrees Fahrenheit which is 25 degrees Celsius. So let's take some humidity and ambient temperature readings here. So I'm just going to set that right on the forest ground here where the Burmese pythons are. I'm gonna let that cook for a second. We're gonna check it out. All right, let's see what we've got. I've let this cook for a couple of minutes. So look at that, almost 90% humidity here at night. It's 26 degrees Celsius, which is 79 point Eh, let's just call it 79.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So at night, the humidity rises as the temperature decreases. So for about six months out of the year, beginning right about now, it's a really good idea to start increasing the humidity within your enclosures. Not only that, but if you intend to breed Burmese pythons, this is the time of year. I'm out here in November. This is the time of year when all the males start cruising around looking for those females. It's almost breeding season, and that is sparked by the beginning of the wet season. So if you're looking to breed Burmese pythons, I would increase the humidity at night and decrease the temperatures at night because that simulates the beginning and the continuation of the rainy season here in Vietnam, and that is what's going to spark breeding activity in your Burmese pythons. And that brings me to the topic of proper enclosures for your Burmese python. So, unfortunately, a lot of people buy Burmese pythons when they're babies because they're cute, they're handleable, they're small, but you have to understand that that little cute baby snake is one day going to turn into a giant snake that is going to be very difficult to work with and very difficult to handle. So keep that in mind and never, ever impulse buy a giant snake like a Burmese python. Do as much research as you possibly can before you buy your snake. So on the topic of enclosures, because these are giant snakes, they need giant enclosures. And there's a couple of reasons why they need giant enclosures. First of all, they need a lot of space to roam. They will explore their environment. They will explore their enclosure. If you are keeping the snake in a four foot by two foot by four foot or even an eight foot or a six foot, that enclosure is too small for a Burmese python. When you think about getting a Burmese python and you think about getting an enclosure, you have to think about that that enclosure is literally going to be as big as a piece of furniture in your house. The other reason why you need big enclosures is because for the health and well-being of your snake, you need to offer it several different temperature zones within that enclosure. We always think about the oversimplified, here's a hot spot on this side, a cool spot on this side. And with a giant snake like a Burmese python, even reticulated pythons, or anacondas, that simply doesn't work. You need to provide several temperature zones. You need to have a hot spot of about 90 degrees because that's what the temperature is out here. In the middle, you need to have it about 10 degrees cooler, and over here, you need it to have about 10 degrees cooler. Now, snakes, especially babies, 
need security within their enclosure, so you have to provide them with a hide box. But even a big 12, 15 foot snake still needs to feel secure. So your enclosure has to be big enough to have a hide box within that enclosure for a snake that could be 12 feet. And that's another reason why you need huge enclosures for these snakes. And when you put your hide box in the enclosure, make sure to put it right in the middle of the enclosure so that you're also giving him those temperature zones within that hide box. Part of that hide box is gonna be hot, the middle is gonna be cooler, and then there's gonna be a cool side so that he can spend as much time feeling secure within that hide box, but he can still thermoregulate within that hide box. So again, when it comes to enclosures for Burmese pythons, think about that you need a furniture-sized enclosure to actually keep them correctly. So there is a lot to consider before you get your Burmese Python. So guys, I wanna give a real quick shout out and a thank you to all my Patreon supporters. It's with your help that I can come to places like this and continue to provide reptile education on this channel. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter and continue to help educate people about reptiles, that link is in the description below. I sincerely appreciate it. And guys, as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.